Hello, fifth graders. It is Mrs. Casilio, your virtual teacher, and I am excited to be here with you for another awesome week of learning. We are on week seven, lesson 30. And our guiding questions, just in review, are how do natural disasters affect the people and places that experience them, and how can we prepare for a natural disaster? Okay, so the materials you are going to need, you will need a new text this week titled Emergency Cruise, Get Ready in Case Huge Earthquake Hits U.S. Northwest. You will need Lesson 30, your Lesson 30 note catcher, a pencil, so go ahead and press pause and grab those materials now. Okay, so our learning targets for today. I can determine two or more main ideas of the text and explain how they are supported by key details in the text, okay? All right, so with your family member, grab somebody. I'm gonna read this with you for our first time. So grab your text as I get mine and let's get ready to read. All right, take a look at that picture at the top. Our title is Emergency Crews Get Ready in Case Huge Earthquake Hits U.S. Northwest. And you can see it looks like some military men and women. Let's read our picture caption. It says, U.S. Air Force personnel exit and load a C-17 at Joint Base lewis McCord in Washington State on June 18th, 2015 as part of an exercise Evergreen Tremor a rehearsal out of the emergency management and military response and the event of a catastrophic Cascadia subduction zone earthquake. Second Lieutenant Hans Ziger, Washington State Army National Guard. So that's where our picture came from. You can see this was published January 28th, 2016. Okay, let's read together. Portland, Oregon. Military helicopters ferry search and rescue teams over the Pacific Northwest. Below lies disaster from a giant earthquake that could strike at any time. Tidal waves called tsunamis cover cities on the coast. Buildings, bridges, and roads are in ruins. Fires burn out of control. Survivors stand on rooftops. Survivors stand on rooftops, cling to floating debris, or are trapped inside wrecked buildings. Scientists are worried about the possibility of scenes like these. They say a great crack in a 650 mile long offshore fault could open. It goes from Northern California to Canada. No one knows if or when it will happen. However, scientists say it might. Emergency officials are busy preparing for the worst. The next section is titled, The Big One. The big one could happen. Federal, state, and military agencies are working together for when the big one happens. More than 14,000 people could die and those injured could reach 30,000. Thousands would be left homeless. Businesses and jobs would be lost for years. The planners would use civilian and military people and equipment to respond to the greatest natural disaster that has occurred in the United States. The response will be greater than that for Hurricane Katrina or Superstorm Sandy, said Lieutenant Colonel Clayton Braun of the Washington State Army National Guard. Since 2013, Braun has led a team working on a military response plan for Washington State. The plan would use all government agencies. Our next section is titled, Thousands of Helpers Would Be Needed. The plan would include cargo planes, helicopters, and ships. Thousands of soldiers, police officers, firefighters, engineers, and medical workers would be called in. Oregon also has a response plan called the Cascadia Playbook. It's named after the offshore fault. The playbook is never more than 100 feet from where I am, said Andrew Phelps, head of the Oregon Office of Emergency Management. When he goes out to dinner, he keeps the playbook in his car. A measured 9.0 earthquake and tsunami destroyed parts of Japan in 2011. The same thing can happen in the Pacific Northwest. Scientists made an estimate for the next 50 years. They say there is a 10 to 14% chance it could hit the Pacific Northwest in that time. That equals about one in 10 or one in seven chance of happening. Phelps said that the Japanese quake made everybody start thinking about planning for disasters. While it is impossible to fully prepare for an earthquake, planners are making progress. 
The plans call for large cargo planes to land at large airports with workers and supplies. Smaller airplanes would bring help to smaller airfields near the disaster areas. The next title is ships would move supplies, people. Helicopters would be in used, helicopters would be in used town, in towns on, let me start that over. Helicopters would be used in towns on the coast because roads and bridges would have been destroyed. Ships would also be needed to bring emergency supplies, help the injured and move the homeless. Emergency hospitals would be set up because those on the coast probably would be too damaged to use. Hotels, college dorms, and sports arenas would be used as temporary shelters. Base camps would set up for emergency workers from across the country. There would be centers for supply, such as food, water, tents, blankets, and medicine. Clean water systems and emergency communication would be brought in. Buildings, bridges could collapse is our next section. Seattle, Portland, and other cities could face great damage. Older buildings would collapse. City search and rescue teams would be sent to look for survivors in the ruins of destroyed buildings. Engineers would be sent in to begin repairing roads and bridges. People say more than a thousand bridges in Oregon and Washington state could be damaged. Coastal highways like US Route 101 would be closed in some areas. Interstate 5, an important highway, would have large cracks in the road. Phelps said he has learned to live with the, with the threat. Still, he said, it's a little unsettling to know that in five minutes, I might have to grab that playbook and call the governor. Okay, so we just had a chance to read that article together. You can always refer back to my reading this week if you need to. What I want you to do now that we've read the article is I want you to think about these following questions. What is this article about? What did you learn about how people are preparing for an earthquake and or tsunami on the West Coast? So press pause do some thinking with your article and come back when you're ready. Okay, so now that you've done your reading, you've done your thinking, I want you to talk about it. So when we're talking, I want you to remember that the main idea is the big ideas that the author wants you to understand and take away from reading the text. And then those key details, remember, support our main idea. So talk about what do you think the main ideas of this article are? What makes you think that? Ground it in text evidence. What explicit information in the text supports your thinking about the main ideas? Those key details that you find in the text. Okay, do your talking and come on back when you're ready. Okay, so we are going to write. What I want you to do is grab your Lesson 30 note catcher and you are going to record the main ideas and key details. You can see on your note catcher, it's very simple. There's the title of an article, main idea one, two key details, Main idea two, two key, two key details. Go ahead, press pause, use your article and do your very best writing. Okay, in closing, I want you to share your writing with someone and tell why you chose to draw or write what you did. And after you've completed that, grab a good book and read for 20 minutes. And as always, our fluency timer, I want you to grab a timer. I want you to Time it for 60 seconds. Write how many words after 60 seconds at the top of your paper that you read and track that number because this week you will continue to get better as you go. So as always, fifth graders, thank you so much for working so hard. I appreciate our time together and I look forward to seeing you again in our next session. Bye.